Even though man has neglected God's word, his word is still the most powerful thing in this earth. God's word said that he's watching over it to perform it and that it would not return void. We want you to catch the vision with us. We want you to be a part of what God is doing in this city. We want you to join us. We can start a miracle in the city of Sarasota because God's word will prevail. Hey, thank you for tuning in today for Winning in Life. My name is Sherman Owens, and I'm the pastor of Victory Christian Family Center here in Sarasota, Florida. You know, the Trinity had something to say about the last days. The Holy Spirit said in the last days some would depart from the faith. Now, Jesus said in the last days that there'd be trouble, there'd be famine, there'd be earthquakes, there'd be wars, there'd be rumors of wars. But you know, God had something to say about the last days also. The Father God said that in the last days He would pour out of His Spirit upon all flesh. And you know, we've been going literally around the world in the last year or two. We've been over to Russia. We've been to Siberia. We've been to Sweden, we've been to England, we've been to Germany, South Africa, just came from South Africa. We begin to begin in, uh, we've been to Guatemala and Peru, and of course, uh, a couple of years ago, we was in way out in uh, over East Korea and all through there. Everywhere we go, we see the prophecy coming true that first of all, we're in hard times, we're in famine, uh, three quarters of the world goes to bed hungry every night, there's wars, there's rumors of wars, there's AIDS and there's pestilence. And we also see people departing from the faith. But you know what we also see? We see the Spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh. German flesh, Russian flesh, uh, uh, Peruvian flesh, Guatemalan flesh, Korean flesh. And it's exciting. And the church is growing. Sure, some are departing, but some are coming. We are in revival. These are the greatest times the church has ever had. And God is moving right in your city, in the city of Sarasota. I want to tell you, if you want a little heaven on earth, you come visit us at Victory Christian Family Center. Now, before we get into that, I want to talk a little more about the church in just a few moments. But I want to take you into a live service here in Victory in Sarasota, Florida. And you watch real close, and I'll be back in a few moments and share with you some things on my heart about what God is doing in the city of Sarasota and Braden. Hallelujah. 2 Kings, the third chapter. This is part two or three. I'm not sure. I believe it's part, maybe it's part three on miracles. We, when we declared August is Miracle Month, so I decided to teach on miracles because uh, what you teach is what you get. You teach healing, you'll, you'll see people healed. You teach just you know forgiveness of sin and you'll see people have their sins forgiven. Uh, so we just teach it all and we get it all. And so uh, I wanted to teach on miracles. You have to be careful about miracles. People that get so wrapped up in miracles are usually not worth very much. They become unproductive, unfruitful, and they become flakes. And they're always chasing after some miracle. Don't get too wrapped up in miracles. You say, well, that's kind of funny. You're teach, teaching about miracles. Well, the 70 come from working a, a, a miracle meeting. They were casting out devils and the eyes were opening up. I believe that was a miracle meeting. The lame were walking. Crippled were getting out of their wheelchairs. They were off their mats. They had a tremendous miracle meeting. People were delivered of devils. They got so excited to come back to Jesus as my Lord Jesus. Even the demons, demons are subject to us in your name. My goodness, we've saw miracles all over the place. He says, don't get too excited about that. Didn't he say that? He said, don't rejoice in that, but rather rejoice what? That your name's been written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what we're to rejoice in. Does that mean we don't believe in miracles or get excited? No. But if you put miracles ahead of Him being your Father, and Him, that you, you're going, you have a home in heaven, and that you're a son of God, you'll get out of balance. I see it happen all the time. I'm talking about people that go to church. God, the people see Satan can take something good. 
Satan can take your love of God and pervert it if you're not careful and get you off believing kind of straight. There's so many wind, windy, flaky doctrines around today. It's incredible what people believe. Charismatics are the first ones, too, and I'm, I'm just as charismatic as any of you. Pentecostals believe in the moving of the Spirit, and we believe in the moving of the Spirit of God, and you better believe it. I believe in all the gifts of the Spirit, but I want to tell you, a lot of them into so many flaky stuff now, calling it God, and it's not God. You don't even find it in the Bible. They just get carried away with all this stuff, you know, and it doesn't produce nothing. It doesn't produce nothing. We need to stay with the Word of God. Amen. And we need to keep miracles in their perspective. And we're, we're teaching, you know, we just had miracle services around here. I believe in breakthrough. I'm changing the name of our TV program to Breakthrough. God's dropped that in my heart. I'm telling you so big the last couple of years, and that's, I'm just going to stay with it. You got always stay with your anointing. Stay with what God's put in your heart. Don't try to teach something someone else is teaching. You teach your own revelation. Now, you can learn things from other people, but until you separate yourself to that revelation, it'll never become your own. But once it becomes your own, man, teach it. I hear something from somebody, I'll give them the credit first time. The second time, I'll say, well, someone said. The third time, I'll say, like I always say. <laughs> Everything I know, I've learned. You understand? Everything I know, I've learned. Well, there's no new thing under the sun. That's, that's not true. Are you kidding me? There's a lot of things I don't know. It's new to me, and I need to learn them. You know what? And I use everything I learn if it's big in me, but stay with what's big in you. Stay with, stay with where your heart's at. Stay with your calling. And God's given me a revelation that people are sitting in the church. Love God who tithers, who need tremendous breakthroughs. I'm talking about good people. I'm talking about good people. I'm talking about the flaky ones that are, are, are here one day and gone the next. Or they've been in every church in town. Been a part of everything, just, you know, they just can't, you know. Uh, I'm talking about people that love God, that are faithful. They need breakthroughs. Many of you sitting there, you, you, know, you know good and well. And I've just really dedicated, you know, uh, my life to see, help people from the Word of God. This is where you get your breakthrough, from the Word of God. Because remember, what we learn is eternal. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be another book. This is it right here. Second, second, second Kings, the third chapter. We saw miracles happen today just like Jesus said. That's what we saw last week. Just like Jesus said. We went through the book of Acts and just like Jesus said. We saw the first one. He said they'll speak with tongues. We saw on the day of Pentecost, that's the first thing happened, spoken tongues. We saw they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We saw that they, Peter and James at the gate called beautiful. That's, that's probably the second thing they did. They reached down, picked the man up, laid hands on him. Laid hand, they picked him up. Laying on of hands doesn't mean just going up and boom like that. You can go up, put your arm around someone, they'd be healed. See? And so we saw, just like Jesus said, that, that miracles just followed the new church. We saw that Jesus said they would follow faith. They would follow faith. Miracles. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. That's faith. These signs, the word signs we saw were miracles. Same word for miracles. These miracles will follow faith. In my name, they will cast out devils. See, you do that in the name of Jesus. Not only does miracles follow those that believe in the name, but miracles follow those that use the name of Jesus and preach in the name. So they, believers do not see miracles, then believe in them. Uh, you know, miracle, they see miracles because they believe in God's Word. Now that's where you have to get in balance, see. I asked God one time about, about Christians believing for miracles. I was just coming into the full gospel. It was about 15, 17 years ago, I guess. I just got filled with the Spirit and, you know, and I was just, you know, excited about miracles and things. And, but I'd studied the other side. And I know the Word of God says that an evil, uh, adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And the word sign means miracles. And so I was concerned about that, Lord. I says, I'm not an evil, adulterous man, and I don't want to, you know, I'm believing for miracles now, and I see miracles in the Bible, and, and, and all of these things. And the Holy Spirit said, believing in miracles and seeking a sign is two different things. He said, you know, I don't seek a sign or a miracle to believe, but because I believe, I expect miracles, see. See, there's a big difference there. I believe in miracles because Jesus said these miracles will follow them that believe. See, those people back there, they were seeking miracles or signs to, to believe that he was the Messiah. They said, you're telling us we're the Messiah. Well, show us a sign. See, you know, I don't, I don't have to see a thing to know that Jesus is Lord. He is my Lord. If I never see another miracle, another sign, never have another answer to prayer, I'm going to go to heaven confessing Jesus is Lord. He's the Son of God, been raised from the dead. That is settled. But because that, because I believe in that, the Bible says I have a right to believe and expect miracles will follow me. I don't follow them, they follow me, praise God. They should tag along behind you just like a puppy. And see, miracles do many times, but we don't even recognize them. 
Oh, I'm convinced of that. We, we've been so trained to believe that miracles are, are, are to, just the almighty glittery explosions of God's almightiness. That is miracles. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that miracles occur in your life and my life probably every day. And we don't see them. We don't see them. And I'm believing for big things. I like the big glittery miracles, just like you. You know, I mean, we're all like that. We're created after his image. That's why we want to see that. Because God's a miracle, supernatural God. We're created in his image. Why shouldn't we be that way? But you have to have that in balance. Now, we saw now that we have a part. This is so important. We have a part in activating miracles. We saw God requ- requires us to be a part of setting our miracles in motion. God's going to require you to be a part of the answer that you need. We want God just to flip a switch and do it, and you know it's just going to happen, but it doesn't work in there. If you need a miracle of increase, God will requ- require you to prepare for increase. Now, keep that thought in your memory back. If you need a miracle of increase, God will require you to prepare for increase. Say, I'm preparing for increase. Now, when you say increase, I'm not talking about just finances. My goodness. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about increase in any area of your life that you need. You know how to make God bigger? Make yourself bigger. How do you make yourself bigger with the Word of God? If you want God to be bigger in your life, enlarge yourself. And you only enlarge yourself through the Word of God. God's not going to get any bigger than He is, but I can be bigger. I can expand myself. Now, if you need a miracle of increase, God will tell you to get ready for increase. He'll tell you to prepare for increase. I believe the miracle is waiting at the door for you and I. The miracle of increase. If it's family members being saved, if it's healing in your body, if it's deliverance, if it's a financial miracle, no matter no matter what miracle you, you need, I believe it's waiting at the door. But you must make preparations for that miracle. It's not a matter of God just dishing out miracles. One for you, one for you, one for you. You've got to prepare for any increase in your life. Any increase in your life, in any area of your life, you must get ready for it. If you're a farmer and you need a bigger crop you, at harvest time, if you want a larger increase, you've got to go out and build a bigger barn. Wanting a bigger crop is not going to give you a bigger crop. Needing a bigger crop is not going to give you a big crop. You've got to plant seed for that crop. If you want a bigger crop, you're going to have to plant more seed, and then you're going to have to build bigger barns, or your miracle will rot in the field. Many of you have miracles, and I've had miracles rot in the field because I didn't prepare for increase. A wise farmer, if he wants larger increase, again, he's going to plant more seed and build bigger barns. And I'm not talking, I know the scripture, I know some of you think, well, the scripture said you're not supposed, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about hoarding it up, I'm talking about having bigger barns so you can give bigger to God and, and believe bigger and do bigger things. I don't want to hoard nothing up and have, when I die, I want to die broke. No, my children don't like that, I know they don't like that, I better change that a little bit. <laughs> I believe, I believe a righteous man needs to leave an uh, inheritance to it. I'm not talking about that. I want to leave my ch- and my grandchildren, see. I want to leave them an inheritance. But you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to die with millions of dollars and all this kind of stuff. You know, I want to use it for God's kingdom. How many would you like to write a $500,000 check to us this morning? We just go ahead and build a sanctuary. By the way, our closing on our loan is Tuesday for sure. I heard that before. Yeah, I have too, but they said it was Tuesday. And I, they told us several other times. That, but Tuesday we close, and we should dedicate our new building. We're kicking out the front of the mall and going on out, and we should do that. Uh, how many do we have in our school this year? 95 in our school. When we get to 100, we're going to celebrate. we got 95 in our school this year already, up to sixth grade. The school is something else. The finest school in the state of Florida. I mean quality without compromise, and it's incredible what God's doing. And when we hit that 100 mark in the school, we're going to let you know about it. But we've got to have classrooms, and we're on that. So needing an increase is not enough. I mean, wanting an increase is not enough. The graveyard is full of people that need an increase, that needed a healing. But needs do not move God. Faith moves God. Want does not move God. Faith moves God. Now, desire is important. Don't get me wrong. If you don't have a desire, you'll never release faith. So, but you've got to get it back in proportion. So you must plant, then build bigger barns. You've got to prepare. You've got to prepare for increase. Miracles are rotting in the fields because we've never got ready for our miracle. You might have even planted the seed for a miracle, but you haven't prepared for the miracle. And I'm going to show you that this morning. See, that's the faith part. Because we saw that miracles don't just happen. Now, miracles and deliverance are probably the most two exciting words in the English language. I mean, you just say miracles and you just say. But they don't come with a flip of a switch. We, you know, Pentecostals, Charismatics, Word, every what you want to call yourself, you know, uh, uh, we just, you know, believe, well, we just believe in miracles. And I believe for miracles to take place, but they don't come just because you... 
flip a switch. You never see God performing a miracle. You never see him using a miracle to accomplish what was humanly possible. Think about it. Think about it. See, Jesus never turned the gifts on himself. When we teach about the gifts of the Spirit, we talk about how the gifts are not supposed to be turned on you. If all the gifts could just be turned on you, you'd be self-sufficient. You'd be like God. You'd be walking in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. You'd be walking in the miracle. I mean, you'd be walking in the supernatural. All the gifts were operating in all your life. They don't. They didn't operate in Jesus' life all the time. He asked questions many times. He asked things, well, where about this? Where's that person? What is this? You know, sometimes he flowed in the gifts. He flowed in all of them. No one floated them like Jesus, but there was times he had to ask things. See, so I'm saying you don't flow in these things all the time. But you never see God using a miracle to accomplish that which was human apostle. Example, when he turned the water into wine, he faced those six water pots. He sat there, faced those six water pots. They wasn't yet full of water. He could have said, be full of wine. And they'd have probably been full of wine, but he first ordered them to be filled with water. Is that right? He ordered them to be filled with water before they came into wine. See, at the price of time and physical effort, they hauled bucket after bucket after bucket to fill those pots to the brim. Now, boy, there's a, there's a sermon in that, to the brim. We remember we preached that a couple of months ago. That was good. After the servants did what they could do, only Jesus, then Jesus did what he alone could do. He turned the water into wine. See, but, but he had them do everything that was humanly possible before he worked the miracle. Same pattern with Lazarus. Uh, uh, Jesus could have said, stone, roll away, but he didn't. He told them to roll away the stone. Then he called Lazarus forth. See, what I'm saying, if you want deliverance, you've got to fill some water pots, you've got to roll some stones away. Say, I have to fill some spots, and I have to roll some stones away. Boy, I know that's getting, I can sense in my spirit that that's kind of getting inside of you. Praise God. Now, see, God can't perform miracles by simply, by his sovereign, own sovereign uh, pleasure if he wants to, but he seldom does. Very rarely. See, I don't teach you to base your faith on something that very rarely happens. I want to base your faith and get you to believe something that can happen every time. See, faith works every time. And God's a sovereign God. I understand. He can do anything he wants, but he'll always do it in line with his word. He holds himself to the sovereignty of his word, see. And, and, and so we usually see man, in most every case, cooperating in faith with God to work their miracles. It didn't take a truckload of fish and bread to feed the multitudes, but it took all the little boy had. See, the, the, he had to contribute what little he had. It's the same with the wi- wi- widow and Elisha. It, it didn't take a, just a little bitty uh, hand of pancake flour in a hand. It just took, it, but it took all she had. See, she had to contribute something to her miracle. She had to prepare for the increase in her life. See, like David in the stone. See, David flung the stone, but God directed that little missile to the giant's forehead. See, it took David's slingshot. It took his stone. It took his effort. It took his energy. It took him believing. It took him slinging that stone. But it was God that directed the missile to his head. You understand what I'm talking about? We've got a part to play. God has a part to play. Peter did his part of walking on the water. Peter had to use his physical energy to swing over the boat, put his legs over the rail of that boat, and step out and begin to walk. God help him up. Up, but Peter had to do the walking. You understand? Yeah. You've got to do the walking. God will hold you up. There's a part that you have to play for miracles. Boy, this is good. This is Bible. Yeah. This is what we need, especially as the people that believe in miracles. We get so, I just get in there and something happened to me. There's a chance it might. Normally, let me tell you what happens to those people that just show up and something happens. They use the next week. They're worse off than they were before or just as bad. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, talk anybody out of their miracle of the faith. I'm just talking about, tell you something that you'll hold it, man, that you'll keep that miracle, praise God. It won't just slip out of your hand. You'll be able to keep, keep it. So the walking part of the miracle was Peter's part. Uh, God's part was, was holding him up, see. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, Peter had to step out. That was his part. The little boy had to give his lunch. That was his part. The, the disciples had to roll away the stone. That was their part. The servants had to fill the pots. That was their part. Then God did what only he could do. Now let me explain something to you that will help you understand about miracles. And I, I, I believe in this with all of my heart. Everything God does is based on a principle, and it's according to a pattern. God doesn't just do things. Well, I just think he does things based on principles in his word, kingdom principles. Everything God does is based on a principle, and it's according to a pattern. You, you, you study it, and I tell you, you'll see it. Miracles, miracles are based on a principle in the word of God, and according to a pattern. Let down your nets. When they let down their nets, the miracle came. Go show yourself to the priest. As they went, the miracle came. Go dip into the muddy Jordan, Naaman. As he dipped, the miracle came. Lift your rod, Moses. Stretch out your hand. Fill the pots. Roll away the stones. Over and over and over, we saw instructions always precede miracles. Instructions. See, that's the pattern. 
Miracles are a principle in God's Word. God will work them. Everything God does is based on a principle, but it's always according to a pattern. When Moses found God's pattern for his life, he found success. When you find God's pattern for your life, you will find success. Many people are not successful. Many people in the ministry are not successful because they haven't found God's pattern for their life. Oh, they believe and they want to do something for God, but they haven't found, they're not successful because they haven't found God's pattern for their life. When you find God's pattern for your life, you're going to have success. When Moses found God's pattern for his life, he found success. His pattern was leave your country, leave your people, and go out into the wilderness and set my people free. He found God's pattern, his purpose for his life. And when Moses broke God's pattern, he failed. Only did Moses fail when he broke God's pattern. Everything God does is based on a principle, and it's according to a pattern. Base your life on principles, not personality. My goodness, write that down. Base your life on principles of God, not personalities. Personality gets you to the top, but it's a principle of God that keeps you there. Personality will take you to the top. Talent will take you to the top, but it's integrity that will keep you there. Glory to God. Some have flown up and flown out. They blew up and blew out. Where are they at today? You don't know where they're at today. They were doing big things last year, two years, ten years ago. I, I, want, I, I don't want to just get in the books. We, we read you a couple of weeks ago about the ten most innovative churches in 1973. You, you drive past them today, you wouldn't even know they were church, are they? They're not in today's ten most fast-growing churches. I see, getting in the book is not the hard thing. Staying in the book is the hard thing. <laughs> Come on, that's right. I want my life. I want to do something for God. And see, God don't remember. People don't remember how fast you do it. They remember how well you do it. We're building a ministry here on quality and excellence. We're not building something speedy, something pop up and personality. No, no. Personality. You know, good and well, if we built this man on personality, we'd still be over in my home with five, six people. Because I don't put up with flaky people and flaky sin and, and that kind of trashy stuff. I don't tolerate that stuff. People come in here and try to, you know, do something and, and try to cause trouble or whatever. You know, we don't tolerate that. I just do not let that happen. A little leaven, eleven to hold up. So I'm pretty strong in some areas. Hey, we'd like to invite you for the time of your life. It's a little heaven on earth is what it is. And I really, I really feel that way. When I come to the service, and, and many of our people feel that way too, it's just so refreshing I mean, you hear from God, you, you're taught the Word of God, and you see the Spirit of God move, and you see people saved and healed and delivered. We've been having so many testimonies this week, just this past week. We had a service, and, and, and we began to minister on breakthrough. So many people need breakthrough. And I'm telling you, our Father God is so good. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't want us to be sick and broke and, and, and struggling. I want to tell you, God created you for the upper room, not the basement. The Bible says that He desires for you to be above only. Only. That word only jumped out at me a couple of months ago. Above only. That doesn't mean God wants you up and down, up and down. He brings you down to teach you something, then brings you up. He wants you above only. That means He wants you to live in the upper room, not the basement. He created you to soar, not fall, climb, not crawl. And God wants you to prosper and be in health. He wants you to love Him first, put His kingdom first, seek the kingdom of God. We don't seek prosperity. We seek the kingdom of God. Then all these things are added to us. That's what victory is all about. We try to live up to our name, victorious Christian living. I believe in victorious Christian living. I believe Christians ought to be the happiest. I believe they ought to be the wealthiest. I believe they ought to have more faith. I believe they ought to be free of worry and fear. I believe we ought to be full of faith, praise God, and full of victory. I believe we ought to be the victorious and not the victim. I believe we ought to overcome instead of being overcome. Well, I, the, the Bible says that we can live like that. And that's what we strive for God's best. And we'd like to invite you to victory. Let me just take a few moments and tell you about our church here in Sarasota. First of all, uh, we have a world vision. We really do. And uh, something that just God, God, you know, we, we were concerned about our neighborhood. We still are. And we have our programs. We have Victory House, uh, uh, Victory House for Women. It's for women that are on drugs or going through alcohol and they, they want to get their life together. And these women live there. They're from our community. They live. See, we're doing something about it. We're not just preaching it. We're not just preaching don't take drugs. We're helping you not to take drugs. We have Victory House for Men. That's where, uh, just down the street, and it's a full-time house where men live there. They go to work. They come home. They have a program they go through. It's a tremendous program. We have overcomers every Tuesday night. Over 100 people meet every Tuesday night. We have classes for women that have trouble with incest or, 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 or you've been abused when you were young. We find that many 
women are sitting in our churches, they were abused by their uncle or their father or, or whatever. And we have classes for those that are, are just have life overcoming problems. They, they want to overcome life controlling problems. And the class is a tremendous class. We, we have a class even for uh, those struggling with homosexuality. Uh, they know it's wrong. They know what God's Word has to say about it. They hate that lifestyle. They want to serve God, but that thing is nagging them and pulling them. I tell you, God's Word has some th things to say about how you can be delivered. And we've seen some tremendous breakthroughs in the area of homosexuality. We deal with matters straight on. The church have failed to try. We've said, oh, it's a sin. We don't do it. Well, that, that's fine. The Bible does say it's a sin. But let's go ahead and give the answer. So we have classes. You know, the people in our church... Unless they want to be involved in this class, they don't, even know who, they don't even know when this class meets. They don't know who the teacher of this class is. We keep it in confidence. And, and, but people are being helped. We believe in helping hurting people. That's what this ministry is all about. See, I believe when you help someone hurting, when you help someone get what they want, God will help you get what you want. And so we're really busy reaching out to hurting people. Our school. We have a Christian school. This year we've just added three new grades. It's uh, K-3. Now we, I guess we start at K-3. K-3, K-4, K-5. Then we go all the way up to the sixth grade this year. Tremendous school. God is blessing us so much. It's incredible. It's just a thrill. I, quality without compromise. Excellence. It's, it's a ministry of excellence. Do you know that excellence is not an accident? It's a results of high intentions. And that's how we try to operate this ministry, is do the best we can because we're doing it for our Father God. Well, well, our school, I could talk about our school all day long. Royal Rangers, we have the Ranger program. 125 young boys come out, and young girls also on Wednesday night involved in our Royal Ranger program. We have Camp Victory. We've just almost, almost completed our first cabin, and we'll have three cabins in this first phase and a big pavilion, uh, showers and baths, and we can bring kids in from the neighborhood, underprivileged kids off the street, and bring them in and to Camp Victory. And so, uh, well, all kind of other ministries, and I'm going to tell you more about some of those later. But God's on the move. God's doing some things. He really is. I want to invite you to Victory. Listen, we meet every Sunday morning during the summer at 9 a.m. One super celebration on Sunday morning, 9 to 11. You'll be out by 11 o'clock. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You'll see the address flash on your screen. Come visit us. We'd love to see you. And come believe in, and we'll believe with you for your miracle. i got to go aim high, and I'll see you at the top in Christ. We thank you for tuning into our program today. Winning in Life is produced by Victory Christian Family Center and depends on the continued financial support from our TV viewers. Tune in next week for another great message with Sherman Owens. Remember, God loves you, and we do too.